hello guys you're welcome back to my channel my name is tessie good morning good afternoon and good evening to you all depending on where you are watching from hope you all are doing well and thank you so much for stopping by in this particular video i bring you guys five critical factors that may lead to the disqualification of president bola ahmed tenibu but before we continue with it i want to beg you all to help me by liking and sharing this video so that youtube and facebook can recommend it to more people all right as the presidential election petition tribunal reaches the permutation stages all eyes are on the five member panel of the appellant court to give its final verdict after admitting several pieces of evidence listening to witnesses and the petitioner's argument however nigerians are on high alert filled with anxiety but patiently waiting for the ruling of the most critical and crucial court case in the history of nigeria's democracy President Bola Ahmed Tinibu, on the other hand, seems somewhat unpredictable following a series of petitions filed against him and the evidence presented before the presidential election tribunal. However, his seat in Asorok is yet to be guaranteed as strong allegations against him and evidence might prove pivotal to the tribunal's final judgment. In this short piece, we have five critical factors that could make Tinibu lose his grip on power. One, questionable conduct of the election by INEC. This has been a topic that has been ongoing for months since the conclusion of the presidential election. Many political pundits and public affairs commentators have often criticized the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, for the poor conduct of the presidential election. Most recently, the European Union EU election observer team released a report revealing that the election lacked credibility and transparency. The result also revealed that the credibility of INEX officials and its leadership were questionable. The report reads, closer to the pools, some started to doubt INEC administrative and operational efficiency and in-house capacity. Public confidence gradually decreased and was severely damaged on 25th February due to its operational failures and lack of transparency. To further enunciate this factor, the media advisor to the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Paul Ibe, told Legit.ng that evidence presented before the tribunal also highlighted and expressly dwelled on INEC complacency and lack of transparency. The justice of the appeal court has looked at all the evidence and I believe that they will render justice on the account of the evidence that the election was fraudulent that the election was not conducted in compliance with the Electoral Act and the INEC guidelines. You see that the results were not uploaded. Now, just to show you the extent of the mischief that occurred, the results for the National Assembly elections, which occurred at the same time, simultaneously with the presidential results, were able to be uploaded, but the presidential election results were not uh, uploaded. And till this day, as we speak, the results have not even been completely uploaded. What is even shocking is that we have seen uh, photographs of individuals, a woman in a bathroom, uploaded supposedly as results on INEX IREF page till this day. How can you elect someone on the basis of the photograph of a woman in the bathroom? I want to quickly mention that a lot of the international observers who were there were as disenchanted as I was. There were four African presidents, former presidents, who were in Nigeria to observe the elections. There were over 144,000 observers deployed across the country. And they all were disenchanted by what they saw. I want to say that what happened in Nigeria was not election observ observation, but a crime watch. We watched a crime being perpetrated on a country of 200 million people with utter and complete impunity. I also want to say that President Jimmy Carter has been vindicated. He went and observed elections in Nigeria many years ago, and he was so upset at the impunity and the brazen theft of the election that he vowed never to go back to Nigeria again. And as that distinguished 
uh, president is in hospice care, he stands vindicated because Nigeria has refused to lend his land. Two alleged drug trafficking. This has been a long-standing issue for President Bola Ahmed Tinibu as both Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi fight this petition against him at the presidential election petition tribunal. It was gathered that Tinibu's legal team admitted at the tribunal that their client forfeited 460,000 US dollar to the American government over the offense of narcotics trafficking and money laundering. In the final address of Atiku, it was clearly stated that on account of this admittance, Tinibu had no basis for contesting for Nigeria's presidency, let alone being declared as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A report, an investigative report by David Mundei, who was uh, an, a journalist, a vest, an investigative journalist, an independent one at that. Now, um, this report talks about uh, or exposes an alleged drug link to uh, the flag bearer of the All Progressive Congress and the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmad Tunubu. Now, the article talks about the APC presidential flag bearer being indicted, you know, in the early 90s uh, for laundering money on behalf of uh, a drug king and all of that drug trafficking in Chicago. Three dual citizenship as part of the petition filed by Atiku and other evidence presented before the tribunal president bola ahmed tinibu was accused of processing the citizenry passport of guinea an earlier report by legit.ng revealed that the legal team of president bola ahmed tinibu admitted that he had the citizenry passport of another country however the argument in court stated that president tinibu had forfeited his citizenry since 2020 the petition in court holds the argument that it was a gross violation of the electoral act and should be considered to disqualify him four niger Kob and ECOWAS struggle tinibu who currently chairs ECOWAS, appears to find it difficult to command authority at the sub-regional level following the recent coup in the Republic of Niger. Tinibu ordered the return of power to military rule with a seven days timeline, but the military junta in Niger said he was not willing to comply. A South African TV even analyzed that the questionable victory of Tinibu at the presidential pools is a contributory factor to the weakness of his authority at the sub-regional level. These military leaders in Mali and Burkina Faso have also warned President Tinibu to stay clear of Niger's business. We will not allow coup after coup. South Africa Five. Atiku Abubakar 121 state as stipulated by INEC. This is a significant case Atiku and the PDP have continually harped upon for the tribunal to uphold as contained in Atiku's final address through his lead counsel, Chris Uche San, said that INEC, INEC action that he won in 21 states was neither disputed, retracted, debunked, nor claimed to be an error through the proceedings of the tribunal so far. This factor has been predicted to prove pivotal to tribunal's judgment. All right, my people, and that is it for you all. I'm going to leave you all to share your thoughts with me on the comment section. Let me know what you think concerning these five factors that may disqualify President Bola Ahmed Tinibu. And with all of that being said, I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.